today, Phil Hale. Do it. Yes, Phil Hale. Um, in my opinion, one of the greatest contemporary artists of all. Um, ever since I saw his work for the first time, I was just completely blown away. And um, his his painter work, his painting work wasn't available all that much and all that easily. And I recall like around about 20 years ago, there was um, his first art book, or at least the first art book that I heard about uh, was about to be published, Goad. Um, and the only thing I could get a hand on was the limited edition with an original sketch, which was very expensive at that time. And it contains his photographic or photo collage work as well as his painting work. Um, so as it is with you know painters you really like, if you can get your hand on anything, it's just great. So this was my, my first Phil Hale book. Um, and I just like his, I don't, whatever he does, I, I find it fantastic. Mm -hmm. How much was this one? Do you remember? I think around 350 euros or something. For this book? Yeah. So it wasn't cheap, but I mean, it, it contained an original sketch, so I figured uh, an original sketch is worth a lot in itself, so I kind of uh, looked at it that way. Mm. I'm not sure, but I think this is maybe something, if you guys know that, you can you can post it in the comments. Uh, I think the not limited version had a different dust jacket cover, but I could be mistaking. So this has um, this, this black one. I do think there's another version of it, but like I said, I, I don't know if I recall that correctly. But yeah, I really take this out of the, the bookshelf once in a while and just look at it in awe and just it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. I love his, his pencil work. Yeah, I can see why. It's again like the line stands for itself. Yes. No cross etching or anything. That's how you do it too, right? Yeah. Or if if you have shading, it's just these abstract shapes, mm -hmm. like just round shapes or these these bracket-like things or S-curves. Yeah, like on the arm here. Yeah, I just really like that. Yeah. Hale has been, as far as I recall, a motorcycle frame designer for <laughs> racing motorcycles for quite some time. And um, did a lot of drawing and painting. And in his early illustration career he did a lot of covers or illustrations for you know adult comic magazines and stuff like that and I think he was an apprentice of Rick Berry's I'll show you a little bit of this book a little later on uh, they made a book together and called Double Memory but this was his first as far as I know his first uh, book with his work uh, only. Mm -hmm. um, I think Stephen King was, um, he found out about Phil Hale's work at some point and he asked him to contribute illustrations for a book. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this was one of his first really successful gigs that he had. Yeah. I think I saw him the first time from a Sandman cover, I think. But not with the uh, regular comic books, because those were all... Um, Maybe I'm full of shit. They were all Dave McKean. For the regular comic book series. Yeah. Maybe. There's probably an illustration or something. He did some incredible Batman uh, illustrations and a few covers. What was it that? I remember it was... I remember it was a comic with a lot of black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could have been Batman.
so Phil Hale recently had a crowdfunding campaign going for mm. a book and I didn't get that. Did you? I was too late. Oh. He's self-publishing, right? Isn't he? I don't know. If anybody knows, let us know. Yeah, please. Yes, so good. It's it's incredible how much is possible if you don't take yourself too serious. Um, if you can just fool around with something that other people would be like, oh, this is this is worth so much and this should be in a gallery and people are just like, yeah. But he's such a master of all crafts. It's, yeah. it's, 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 uh, he's so full of great ideas and, and visual fireworks. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> Insanely good. Such a free spirit. It's just that's tricky. Yeah. Again, super thick paper. Yeah. It's um pretty glossy, like you would expect in a photo book, which is probably the intent. I would say. I mean, a lot of the work is is phot photography. Yeah. yeah. Insane. And you got original artworks. Yes, I was lucky enough to uh, have a chance to buy some of his original artwork. Yeah. a couple of years ago maybe we can check them out at some point yeah yeah is this is, is this everything you have of Phil Hale or do you have in terms of books yeah in terms of books books yes okay. there's uh, I, I tried to collect everything I could find in, in covers and, and illustrations and stuff like that yeah. I don't have any of his playboys uh, he did a lot of illustrations for the American playboy mm -hmm. I own one original conceptual painting for a piece that was in Playboy, but he changed it and repainted it in more in color and I have the, the black and white version. There's another two books that came out a few years later, um, Mockingbird Relaxator. That's what they're called. One book is on painting and illustration, one is on photography. They were shipped with this little bandage thing. Banderol? Banderol. I don't know, whatever it's called. Band something. And there was also a CD that came along with it. Really? Huh? Yeah. Digital art or music? I think it was music. He's a musician? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a visual person. All good. I'm very forgetful. Yeah. So this one's this one's on his photographic work where he takes pictures of, of objects and basically glues them back together in to create new shapes. Oh no, this, these are the paintings now. So I guess this is the photo. Yeah, that's the photography book. Go for the paintings. He's, he's trying to cheat us. Got this. Smart guy. You got this now. Yeah, so here's um, a lot of the later uh, works. These are from 2005. Hmm. And uh, this is kind of an example of the kind of art, the direction that he's, he's kind of taking from them, which is really awkward everyday situations uh, turned into a nightmarish montage. Mm -hmm. I'm not a great big fan of uh, interpreting artwork. I think you just should just see it and see how you feel. And if it resonates, it resonates. And if not, then it doesn't. But um, these more rough pieces, I just think they're incredible. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. And again, with things like this, it's just, uh, you know, it's just a fluorescent light on the ceiling. Everything can be turned into an image, and with that image, you can tell a story. So 
uh, I like how he's how daring he is with his choice of motives. Um, that's always something I found very inspiring. Mm -hmm. Because he could turn something like a like an old golf cart, or maybe yeah, it's a golf cart, and uh, like a, a, a vacuum cleaner, a vacuum or cleaner hose oh, of some sort yeah. uh, into a great piece of art. A couple of times, actually, it seems. Yeah, and again, you never got through this. Uh, this looks more like a like the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. These really dark portraits. I couldn't say it's a portrait. But no happy trees there. No happy trees. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uneven Stephen. Yeah. Another one of Uneven Stephen. I mean, the choice of titles is also yeah. quite funny. I really like this one. Yeah. The, wow. The crazy thing, if you ever have a chance to uh, take a look at his original artwork, it's so magical because it's it, it looks almost simple how it's made. Because it's it's oil on on board or linen or wood, and he does this uh, wiping away technique where you put uh, paint on and you wipe stuff away and you put stuff back on. And you look at it, oh, that looks almost simple, but it's so difficult to do. You have to be such a master of knowing exactly what you do. It's yeah, I think that's what I find mostly most mind blowing about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. And it's his humor. In a way, he, he paints these darkish, hellish uh, pieces, but there's they always have a sense of humor. I really like that about them. And that's the photo, I guess. No, that's the painting. You're totally right. Most artists are cowards. Like village shaman, the what they cajole, cajole the hunters, hunters with, with snake, snake oil, oil illusions. illusions. Yeah. Justin, Justin Mortimer. This is really good graphic design, by the way. Um, and I, I told Eric that um, it's kind of weird that the books look like that, because you wouldn't expect anything from this. From something so plain but the content is is just super cool um, we get to see all these these great ideas and if you know what to do with it you know uh, it's worth and if not it's just stuff yeah, but that's isn't that like that with everything in life Eric absolutely it's like that with everything in life you're such a philosopher Thank you. Finally, someone recognizes that this is this is drawings. Yeah, there's the photos. This is a lot of drawings. Yes. Not much photo. You promised me photos. There's a photo. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That's a photo. More photos. Again, These also make paper. make for great tattoo designs. Yeah, you think? Yeah, yeah, a friend of mine has one on his leg. Okay. And it works just really fine. Oh wow. This is cool. Yeah, I don't. I could say this is one of my favorite pieces but it's <laughs> it's touching a nerve you and squids huh yep and 
amazing. Oh, this this is badass. This needs air guitar player. This needs a close up. Prisoners shanking. Badass. What else do you got? What is this one? Well, <clears throat> this is the, the collaboration thing between Phil Hale and Rick Berry. Rick Berry was one of the pioneers of digital artwork. Mm -hmm. And um, if I remember correctly, Phil Hale was his assistant for some time. Mm -hmm. And at least they got an introduction by Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones, Daryl Anderson, Jerry Wiest, and Steve Brown. So <laughs> this is cool. I have painted with these guys and I like them, which I'll probably come to regret. Sounds legit. There you go. So this one's signed by Rick Barry, mm. not not by Phil Hale. Um, under normal that. circumstances, I would be should be very sad about that, but since I have a few signed pieces and actually own five original paintings of his, uh, I'm kind of over that now. It's okay. It's right? okay it's for okay. now. But yes. Let, let, I'll let you flip through it. This is um, much older work. I forgot the, the publishing year. Maybe we should look this up. Yeah, this has been um, fixed up by a gallerist. So 1988? No. 92. 1992. Yeah, so this is been around for a couple of years and I got this from a gallerist so that's why it has this uh, plastic uh, dust cover and also like an internal addition to the plastic to you know keep it from sticking hmm okay so yeah 1992 with lots of digital artwork as some of you might know, the technology in 1992 for creating digital artwork wasn't all that swell as it is today. So there were uh, Wacom tablets and it was Photoshop and all of that. I think in 92 it must have been Photoshop 7. So it was pioneer work that Rick Berry did. And um, a lot of that is in here as well as his oil paintings and quite a few early pieces by Phil Hale. Yep. That's Phil Hale. You can kind of see the direction he's heading uh, with his paint strokes mm -hmm. because they're still, you know, he still uses those. Yeah. Plus the pho photographic work. Tomato monkey. De la croix. Yeah. So when when you start building up a collection of art books, um, of course you buy the books by the artists you like, uh, but sometimes it's Art books have like a, an historic kind of value too because you get to have take a glimpse at how people worked in in the older days how visual ideas were put down on paper or canvas um, what kind of composition followed the materials so it's it's just generally interesting to see how artwork evolved over time so even if the books are old, they might contain ideas that are still really valid and valuable. Especially like these Phil Hale paintings. I mean, this is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And again, it's so funny. His sense of humor is just fantastic. The way he started out with doing these robots in 92. Mm -hmm. That stuff I saw much, much later by other great artists. This um, creation of you know people and robots and mm -hmm. humor and all of that. But... I think he was the first one uh, where I saw that. Diesel Bob. So I had this stuff like that. It is, um, by modern standards, it's, you know, maybe not as, as hip anymore, these things, but that's just... Uh, I wouldn't say that. 
I wouldn't say that. No. I think it's great. It's fantastic. I see some of these things for the first time. I haven't been diving too much into everything, anything that... I, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, I, uh, I never heard of uh, Rick Barry. Yeah, a lot of people haven't. I haven't heard of him. I didn't know um, his work. And this is brilliant. Also in two-day standards. Maybe because you know him for so long. Possibly. I don't think so. That's really cool. So how much did you pay for this one? I have no idea. No remembrance. Um, I think if I recall correctly, it wasn't that much because at that time, nobody was interested in Rick Berry or nobody really knew anything about Phil Hale. Yeah. So sometimes you have artists who do fantastic work and are famous at one point in time and that, that fame kind of drops and then it rises again. Uh, and I think that happens to many artists who are just very popular for some time span and then nobody really wants to see their work anymore. So I think I got this one at a time where Phil Hale wasn't really that hot shot and he wasn't, um, or the, the, the seller didn't really understand what he had there. Mm -hmm. I never checked if this was available on eBay or anything. Um, I didn't really buy many books on eBay when it comes to like, rare or so. There's or, still so much stuff there. Yeah. I recently checked eBay, which I don't do often, but I checked and there's really good stuff there. The only thing that I would wished was that people would put up more photos so I can see the condition of the yes. book. And they just don't do that. Uh, and when I when they don't do that, I'm always like, there must be a reason for them not doing that. Yeah. So, I'm not buying. That's really good here. That's perfect choice of colors. It looks like Willem Dafoe. Yeah. That's an amazing art book. Yeah, it's one of those really well done. unknown treasures. Yeah. And whenever well. I look at it, yeah, it's it, like I said, it's this this choice of technique and this choice of um, composition. In a way, I mean, this is something I always teach my my sculpting students. Your your tool shapes the piece. So if you have a tool that is that has a certain shape, that shape is being put onto your sculpture. And it's often the same in painting. So the different brushes, they shape your piece. So when it comes to traditional paintings or traditional work, you can really see the types of tools that were used and can then kind of reconstruct or construct your own digital brushes if you want to work with digital brushes or digital techniques. Like when I do digital painting, I fake my, my traditional watercolor paintings by creating, you know, just flat layers of, of sprinkles, mm -hmm. which I always did in watercolor. I would have a big piece of paper and I would get it slightly wet, use a tooth, toothbrush and, and spread the paint and then like use some, some kitchen towel and take some out again. So these, these techniques, I just try to use the same thing in digital. What did you find? I found this here. This book was set in Bauer Bodoni times in Taiyan, uh, composed by a Vasa a Gogo on a Macintosh 2FX using Adobe Photoshop and Quark Express. The be I hated Quark Express. <laughs> when Freehand came, I was like, wow, thank you. And then InDesign came, I was like, okay, but yeah, thank you. The best of the reproduction photography by Richard Keeley. Digital fire references produced by Zoom Photo, Print Liaison, Interprint. The music of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds had a powerful effect upon the authors during production. I find that quite charming. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. I love it. Great yeah. book. So, if you want to expand your collection, especially of Phil Hale work, Warwick Berry's work, get this. Um, it's a beautiful book. Mm -hmm. As well as Mockingbird Relaxator. Those two are quite a gem. If you got your hands on the um, book that Phil Hale made, uh, made uh, during the last Kickstarter campaign, 
in 2020. I think so. It's quite recently. Uh, let us know what you think about it. I would love to know. And uh, maybe send us some images um, either on, on Patreon DM or send us something uh, and maybe your opinion about it uh, also on, on the Discord server. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Adios. Bye.